Fawn Princess here, back with another video for you guys, and today we're going to do something highly intellectual and highly scientific, which is to create a tier ranking of brands, essentially ranking them from best to worst. Uh, and this is through the Tier Maker website. There's actually already a Lolita version of tier ranking ready to put some results in. So I will let you know about my impressions. That being said, I am interested in seeing what your guys' opinions is on the brands. So if you want to include your own ranking in the comments below, I will be so, so interested in reading that. Please do bear in mind that any of these rankings are based on A, my personal taste, and B, my experiences with the brand. Depending on the pieces that I've owned and, you know, the, the, the different years where I was buying this specific brand, my opinion might be different than one of yours, for example. So it's just important to keep in mind that it's my personal opinion and you're entitled to your own. If I rank a brand a bit lower than what you would have liked, it's not necessarily that I hate it, it's just my experience with the brand hasn't been stellar for the few pieces that I own. The different ranking possibilities include damn, kawaii, okay, meh, may mana-sama forgive them? And of course, I don't know the brand. So all of these brands will be rated on this scale, uh, you know, based on my personal opinion. The first brand that we are going to rank is Atelier Pierrot. They create these magnificent pieces that are all chiffon corsets. The fabrics are always really magnificent uh, and I very much appreciate the brand. That being said, I do, I did own and I currently own some of their dresses that are a bit uncomfortable, like some of the, the boning would stick into my underarm or uh, the elastics around the sleeves if you tied up the corset as it, is, as it is meant to be worn, you know what I'm saying. In the back, it actually serrated my arm. Uh, so even though the fabrics and the lace and everything just makes me dream and the designer is a sweetie, I think I would put this brand in the kawaii section because even though I love their design, sometimes I just feel like my body shape might be a bit wrong for the dresses. Anyways, I've had a couple of dresses that weren't as comfortable as I would have liked. That being said, in regards to look, feel, and aesthetic, I really adore them. I do think that though, uh, I love when they branch out because a lot of their dresses can get a little samey. Just, just close your eyes and think of all the corseted dresses with the same type of cut that you've seen from them. They've done that dress in like a million different fabrics and I love it, but at a point in time, you know, sometimes I want a bit more more of a wild side, um, a bit more variety, and that's something that I find sometimes I don't get quite as much. So Atelier Pierrot would be a kawaii brand. Oh my god, kawaii! The next brand is Alice and the Pirates. As you guys know, they do boy style, Lolita, pretty much anything under the moon. They've been around forever and they have a wide var variety of different styles of clothing. In regards to boy style, my hips can't fit in it, I'll be honest, but on other people, it looks absolutely amazing. In regards to Lolita clothing, I love their uh, more pirate or gothic, uh, you know, in inspired clothing. I do own a few pieces by them, um, and I've owned some over the years. That being said, their recent releases have drawn me in a little less. Um, so for me, they would be kind of in between an okay and a kawaii, because sometimes their pieces leave me kind of like a little cold and sometimes I'm, I'm really excited about it. But if I were to rate kind of Alice in the Pirates in regards to aesthetics now, uh, they would be a bit more in the okay category for me. But if I were to rate the old Alice in the Pirates from a couple of years ago, they would go in the kawaii bucket for me. I mean, it's okay. Next is a smaller brand called Abilotage. Abilotage is a uh, brand that does corsets and stockings. I've only owned some of their stockings. That being said, their designs are really off the charts. Like the, it is like the most amazing sock patterns and creative designs that you'll ever see. Their corsets also look great. I just haven't had the pleasure of owning one of these, uh, but aesthetics wise and quality wise in regards to their sock from what it can speak to, I would put them in the kawaii category. Oh my God, kawaii. Atelier Buzz in regards to their uh, designs, they do more of a gothic, really pure, seamless type of style. Their fabrics are beautiful and thick. Uh, and really they invest a lot in the cuts of their garment. They don't really do prints as much, but you can see a wide variety in regards to their clothing. They also do boy style and personally hot take, but I prefer the boy style that Atelier Buzz does to what Alice and the Pirates does in, in regards to the cut and the fit of the garments. And 
for the gothic Lolita, they really do kind of a, a nun type of style. Uh, before Baby and Alice and the Pirates started getting into that game, they were already doing that type of aesthetic. So personally, I do think that Atelier Buzz is so uh, distinct and so kind of original that it does kind of rank as a kawaii for me. I don't own many pieces by them as, you know, I'm more of a prince gal, let's be honest, uh, but I do admire their, their cut and designs a lot. And I have a, a friend who looks absolutely gorgeous in them. Every time I see a piece, I'm like, oh my god, I love it. So yes, a kawaii brand for me. Oh my god, kawaii! Moi moitié, what else can I say except damn, because to be honest, this brand, I've loved it ever since I started, uh, you know, wearing Lolita fashion. Ever since 2008, it's been a brand that has been in my heart so, so much. And I've seen them evolve over time. And to be honest, I am so happy to see that they're becoming more active internationally. I watch their lives and their Instagram feed. I, I mean, and the, uh, the social media correspondent that kind of does all these things is amazing, but their designs over the years have been consistently beautiful and I love their print, their cuts, their designs. They fit on a wide variety of different body shapes. I, I just am completely in love with them. Um, it's, it's really been a staple in my wardrobe ever since the start. I own pretty much any, uh, like headdresses, dresses, blouses, skirts, socks, uh, anything that you can think of of Moment Moitié. I absolutely adore them and I'm always checking out, uh, you know, the new releases that they're, they're coming out with. So for me, it is really a damn brand because it's just been in my heart consistently and I haven't really been disappointed uh, in regards to their releases. The only exception to that being the first release of Sleeping Garden, really, really the first one, the green colorway when I had received the dress, it, well, actually it was supposed to be gray, but it, it appeared kind of a green, you know, like when your printer is starting to run out of colors and everything is that kind of washed out green. Well, that happened to me the one time, but then I bought it again once it got re-released in a blue and it was absolutely gorgeous and I loved the cut even, even more. Uh, but apart from that, I, as I said, I have bought so many items from their brand and I have never been disappointed in regards to quality. So really it's a damn brand for me. Damn, check out that brand. Angelic Pretty. What not to say about Angelic Pretty. I know a lot of people, okay, first and foremost, let's set the table. I am not a sweet Lolita. So take what I'm going to say with a grain of salt. I do think that um, Angelic Pretty of olden days would fit into a kawaii bucket for me because even though it, it wasn't my style, I used to look at these dresses on other people and think, oh my God, I want this dress. It looks so cute. But then when I wore it, I thought that I looked like an old maid dressed in beautiful, cute clothing and it just didn't jive with me. Uh, so I don't own many Angelique pre Pretty pieces and the only pieces that I do own are the ones that are a bit more either Hime or classical or gothic, you know, leaning so that I at least have a leg to stand on on that, uh, on that end. But the one thing that I do want to say that has, that I have noticed that maybe a hot take or maybe, you know, you guys are aware of it, but I have found in the recent years that the quality has really dipped for this brand. They've started to put like a, the under, like an organza fabric over their dresses. Like, yo, that's underwear to me, to me, it's like what my petticoats are made of, right? Uh, I've noticed uh, on some of my friends' dresses that it's a, it, it's like a cheaper quality fabric than the old cotton pieces that used to be the staple. Um, I mean, I still love their designs, but oftentimes the execution and the choices of materials recently is something uh, that I find myself less swooning over. Uh, so for me, they would be downgraded to an okay. Please don't throw stones at me. I am so, so sorry. But really, as I said, Angelic Pretty of the olden days would have been kawaii, and now it's more of an okay for me. I mean, it's okay. Baby the Star Shine Bright. So Baby the Star Shine Bright is also a brand that's as old as time, has had so many different releases, and in regards to them, like, okay, once again, it's gonna be a hot take. I prefer Angelic Pretty's patterns and designs to babies globally speaking, but baby, the quality has been always kind of rocky from what I could see, because even about 10-ish years ago, sometimes some of their pieces would have cheaper fabric that would easily wrinkle. Uh, also, baby sometimes has a thing which I call the droopy-eyed bow. Like, you know, Angelique Pretty has these crisp bows that are really like standing stiff and tall and proud. Baby's bows are oftentimes a bit softer and they will droop on the sides 
it's something I know it's such a small pet peeve. You guys are gonna be like, what? But it really annoys me personally. Um, so Baby would be more of an okay brand as well. Um, but they've always been more of an okay brand for me. Like some of their pieces I'll like, some of their pieces I'm gonna go, ugh. But um, globally speaking, it's just not my jam. I like their Hime pieces, that I have to say. That's like really the thing that draws me to them. But the rest, it just doesn't resonate with me. I, I, I love it on other people, but as I said, the droopy bows, they, they kind of annoy me for some reason. I mean, it's okay. Body line. So this is another hot take because technically I preferred body line 12 years ago to body line of today. Like they used to do a lot more experimental stuff, uh, but you know, so it, they, went, they went through phases because they, they used to do experimental stuff that was super cheap. Then the experimental stuff got super expensive and was like the same price as Taobao. And you were like, why am I paying Taobao prices for like a, a tenth of the quality? And then they started going a bit more legit. Currently, I do see that they're trying to get more legit designs out, but I can't speak to that because I haven't owned any of them. But to me, Bodyline was always more of a meh and sometimes more of a please mana forgive them because some of them were eyesores. But silver lining, their shoes are super durable and super comfortable. So that's why it's more of a meh category because I wouldn't say it's a full on train wreck dumpster fire, but it's adjacent to a dumpster fire if you get what I'm saying. It's a little bit meh. Black Piece Now. So they. I believe they are closed now. Uh, it's a brand that did boy style and did some Lolita fashion clothing, but um, it was never quite as popular, I think, overseas as some of the other brands. I personally liked them, but a lot of their designs were just, I felt like it was a, a, a bit lacking in, in oomph, you know, lacking in drama. Their material choices were also more in line with like mainstream clothing. Oftentimes they wouldn't use like big, big velveteen and things like that. There were some exceptions, some of their pieces did, but as I said, I just felt like their their pieces lacked a bit of drama for me, so they, they were kind of an okay brand. Uh, the boy style, though, was really, really cute. My spouse used to own them, you know, not singing, but it's it used to be very cute on him, so that's the exception. So uh, the, the boy style was definitely more of a soft spot for me, but the Lolita clothing was just okay. I mean, it's okay. Echantelic Echantille was, uh, well, is, is still an awesome brand. Uh, so they do a lot of cat and library prints. It's kind of the Achilles heel for me because I do love me some cat prints. I do love me some book prints. So their designs, I do tend to favor them a lot and they have a lot of crown related motifs. I just, it's, it's such an easy brand. I also appreciate the fact that a lot of their clothing is made to a wide variety of, uh, you know, shapes and sizes, can wear them. It's really something that I, I very much enjoy. So for me, it's a solid kawaii brand uh, because their material choices I like, the quality I like, they have a good price point. Uh, yeah, very approachable brand for a lot of reasons. So for me, definitely a kawaii brand. Oh my god, kawaii! Emily Temple Cute is more of a um, cuter brand, maybe more Otome than full-on Lolita. They have released some pieces that were a bit l more Lolita leaning, uh, but globally speaking, I wouldn't necessarily say that, it, uh, you know, it was an amazing brand. Really, for me, it's more of a meh because it, it's never appealed to my style sensibilities. I can't say that I've owned any of them. I've only seen them worn on other people and they look cute, but they look casual and my casual is just not their idea of casual. So for me, it's a meh brand. It's a little bit meh. Eccentrique, the brand that does corset and military style Lolita. I think they might have been closed actually now that I'm thinking about it. I haven't seen any of their stuff in the longest time. I do appreciate some of their designs, but I always thought that it was an odd mix to add them to Lolita. They do have some dresses that you can wear petticoats under, but sometimes some of their corsets were very, very long and you can't easily do that type of corset with Lolita on top of it or under it, like it, it wouldn't sit quite right. Um, but I did admire their designs and cuts a lot. I really thought that it looked very good. Uh, but for me, it's more of a meh brand, which is surprising because I'm a girl who loves some corset lacing and some corset patterns. But yeah, for me, it just didn't appeal. Um, and the military style, 
I prefer in like meta. Uh, so anyway, we'll get to that down the road. But uh, yeah, so Eccentric for me is a meh brand. It's a little bit meh. H and Auto, the punk brand per excellence, apart from Purumayo, of course. Uh, I haven't owned any of them, but I always dreamed of owning their uh, kind of cage overskirt uh, you know, skirts. I just thought that they looked so cool. A lot of their patterns were more deconstructed, which is why it's more at the limit between Visual K and Lolita, I would say. But I recall swooning over old uh, GLB guides back in the day, just looking at their designs and going like, wow, this looks really dreamy. Uh, but it's just, it's an aesthetic that I always found that was hard to coordinate. Maybe it's just because of my incapacity to coordinate that type of style, or maybe I didn't try hard enough. I don't know. Uh, but I did admire their pieces from afar. Uh, it's just not as much my jam. So for me, it's more of an okay brand with some standout pieces. I mean, it's okay. Innocent world. So even though technically their dresses and skirts are not necessarily the ones that make my heart pitter patter the fastest, let me tell you that it's one of the brands that is the most heavily represented in my wardrobe. Uh, apart from Julie de Justine, Moi Moitié, and Min Fleur, uh, Innocent World really has a lot of variety in regards to designs and cuts, have super versatile clothing, and it's very easy to wear at the office. So to be honest, a lot of my daily wear it consists of Innocent World. They're easy to throw in the washing machine. They're easy to just wear casually. So for me, it definitely is one of those damn brands because even though oftentimes for big meets, I don't choose to wear Innocent World because it doesn't have enough va va -voom, I do find that they are the most versatile and easy to wear in an everyday life. And as in a lifestyle Lolita, that counts for a lot of points. So Innocent World gets my damn status. Damn, check out that brand. Okay, the brand that probably everybody's wondering about. Metamorphose Tant de Filles. So Metamorphose Tant de Filles is a brand that does everything from punk to sweet to goth inclining types of designs. They have done it all. They will do the most random prints you've ever seen, but the true magic I find is when you have somebody uh, like Marianne Emmanuel, who I've had on this show before, who knows how to coordinate them and to really bring out the, the creativity and magic that is encompassed in that brand. Uh, so even though Meta, technically I've owned pieces by them, but I don't currently have any of their, of their pieces in my wardrobe, I do recognize that their quality has been steadfast throughout the years. They have showcased some of the most original creativity throughout the years. And for people that know how to coordinate it, which apparently doesn't include me but includes some Lita experts uh, it is a, a kawaii brand to me because even though it might not be my jam I love to see it coordinated I love to see the end result that always makes me go wow this is stepping up the game so meta is like the brand that you look at the stock pictures and you go all right and then you see it on somebody and you're like whoa so for me meta definitely a kawaii status Oh my god, kawaii! Milfleur, the like most unknown brand ever, but one of my favorites. Uh, Milfleur is a small Japanese brand that only went out of country once, I believe it was in Texas uh, for a con, but they do uh, clothing that has remained quite like in the same aesthetics since I've started Lolita like 12 years ago, but I still love their style. It's a lot of ruching, it's a lot of bustles, it's a lot of drama, it's a lot of corset dresses, like I just... I love them. And once again, just like Innocent World, it's also, I find, one of the easiest brand to wear at the office. Like some of their flowery dresses are easy to wear. Summer dresses are super versatile. The, the fabric is thick and lush and their blouses are to die for with beautiful princess sleeves. Really, their pieces, I look at the website, I'm like, oh, it looks good. And then I receive it, I'm like, oh. So it's a damn, uh, it's definitely a damn brand for me because I just love their stuff. So, and you can get them super cheaply on the aftermarket. So I've oftentimes gotten some of their uh, dresses for like $50 or $80 and they last me years and years and years and they look amazing. So yes, for me, it's a damn brand. Damn, check out that brand. Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is a brand that my, uh, my tastes and opinion have fluctuated over the years. I used to own about probably 10-ish dresses of them, which, you know, it was pretty big for a brand that almost since I started Lolita stopped just selling dresses and started only doing reservations a couple times a year for like one or two designs. Um, so I did accrue quite a few of those. Uh, I love the fact that they are very like rococo leaning and they, ha they have beautiful designs. But I found that versus if I compare uh, classical brands, uh, 
Victorian Maiden has more of a grown-up, mature, dramatic feeling, and Innocent World is more on the cutesy side, and Mary Magdalene is like smack dab in the middle. Uh, and their designs are beautiful, but sometimes the sizing's a bit wonky. So I've had loads of their dresses that are supposed to fit fine, and then I can literally fit a second set of, you know, of breasts in there. So it's uh, like really, really too big. Uh, and so because of that, and I know they've gone through a lot of changes over the years, their quality has fluctuated over the years, and the sizing definitely has changed as well. But Really, it's a brand that I love the designs of. It's just that sometimes the execution when I receive the product, I'm a bit disappointed. Like the waist doesn't arrive at the right location or apparently I, I, I'm not enough of a grown woman to fit into the dress, you know, any of those cases. So for me, it's between a kawaii and okay brand. I've gravitated away from it and more towards uh, Victoria Maiden. And so, yeah, it's between uh, a kawaii and okay. I mean, it's okay. Miho Matsuda. Miho Matsuda is a brand that offers very simple gothic designs. I haven't owned any of them. Uh, they do look cute, just not, you know, $200 cute, say. Uh, so because of that, it's more of a meh brand for me, even though I, I do find their stuff cute looking. I just, it's never been really a pull for me. Uh, and it's cool if it's a pull for you. It's just, yeah, it, would, it never suited me. It's a little bit meh. Physical Drop was created by one of the designers of Meta, uh, and it's a brand that has a view on the world that's a bit different. I find that my appreciation for the brand has increased since I met the designer because she said, I don't care if people don't have like brand name tags showing or anything like that for my brand. I just want my clothes to be wearable to like women of any ages or sizes. That's the whole point of it. So she brings a lot of the creativity that used to be in the older meta uh, designs to her brand. But what I found really inspiring is that it can literally fit pretty much any type of body type. Like she does uh, sleeves that can literally extend by this much. Uh, same thing around the bust area. So it can fit really small people or really um, larger people. Like it really depends on, on the cut and whatnot, but she has tried to make her brand as accessible to everybody as possible. I very much like the fact that it, it didn't have too much of an elitist angle on the brand. So for me, uh, it, it's like a, between a kawaii and okay, because even though I, I love the, the mindset, it, the clothes don't resonate uh, with me as much. So for me, yeah, more of an okay in regards to my personal taste, but in regards to vision and what they bring to the community, more of a kawaii. I mean, it's okay. Queen Bee, the shoe brand. To be honest, my feet are too big to fit into their shoes, but I have a friend who, has, who wears like fives or sixes and their shoes are just amazing. And they also do some real leather shoes that have lasted her for years. So for people that fit into their, their ranges of sizes, Queen Bee is really cute and it's good. So it would be a uh, kawaii uh, brand. Oh my god, kawaii! Antique Beast is a store that's a bit of a, a mysterious one. It's only open for orders on a very limited uh, amount of days and you have to like try to squeeze your order in. A lot of their designs are so iconic that they will be taken apart uh, by Taobao brands and copied, uh, but I really do appreciate kind of their, their design and their flair, uh, like the bat headdress that I'm sure you guys have all seen. For me, it would really be a kawaii brand. The quality seems to be very good. I don't own any uh, personally, but I have some friends that do and it looks absolutely beautiful and it really adds a bit of oomph to an outfit. Oh my god, kawaii! Julie de Justine! Spoiler alert, it's a damn for me because of course it is. Uh, it's the brand that is the most represented in my closet. About a third of the total amounts of my dresses, uh, if not a bit more, is from Julie de Justine. I find that they do, kind of like Meta, they do some really wacky stuff, really impressive stuff that's completely creative. And personally, it really resonates with me. Which other brand would put aristocratic furrets on uh, on a dress, like in, in a bright yellow colorway? None is the answer. But I really like the fact that they do classic stuff, more gothic stuff. So it's like my dark hime classical aesthetic really fits into that. Um, I also love the designer. I love the mindset behind the brand. I, I love how it fits on my body. It's also a brand that's super easy to wear at work. So I wear it loads. It's really like it's worth the money investment. I do want to put kind of a asterisk here because I have heard some, some critiques of the brand, which I think people need to be aware of. Uh, certain releases sometimes have been criticized because the, the sizing on the site 
isn't actually exact and it, when you actually receive the dress for example it's like two centimeters less than was advertised which can be a big deal if you were really really close uh, to the maximum size and this can be really a big annoyance another thing is that sometimes people receive dresses where uh, the seams aren't finished like uh, they will be kind of jagged and raw and then th that can lead to wear and tear so those are some critiques that some people have uh, given to the brand that being said I haven't had any issues with them I love their stuff I love all of their stuff I think they're amazing I love the fact that they put so much love and care into their garment and you even receive a custom box I love the fact that you can order custom size so if you don't fit in the measurements you can add you know, a couple inches or remove it. I just love all the attention and love and care they put onto their fabric and designs. It's a damn brand for me. Damn, check out that brand. Sheglet is a brand that does gothic inspired, well not even inspired, it's just plain gothic clothing. They do a lot of overlay skirts and corsets, but also, you know, literal skirts and dresses. They do a bit of everything. They, they have some socks, they have really anything you can think of. Uh, the one item that I do own from them is a corset with an overskirt attached, which is just to die for, I swear, guys. And a lot of their clothing seems to have beautiful quality to them and a lot of attention to detail. So they might be less dramatic on the onset, but they're made to be mixed and matched and coordinated accordingly. And once that's done, that's where the magic happens because the dresses are going to look absolutely gorgeous. So even though it's a, it's a brand that I don't own a lot of, I would be between a damn and a kawaii but because i can't really speak to the quality as much i think i would put them in kawaii oh my god kawaii oh my god triple fortune so triple fortune used to do pretty much only vintage hats edwardian hats that type of stuff bonnets of course they branched out and have now started to do skirts dresses over skirts over dresses like anything you can think of and socks and accessories uh, personally, it would be a damn brand just because I absolutely swoon and drool over their hats. You guys know me. I'm a hat girl. I love to have big things on my head. You know, today's an exception. Uh, and because of that, to me, that would be around that score. That being said, their actual dresses are oftentimes less my jam, like very high pigment, high color, loads of butterflies and bright flowers. That's less my jam, but because of just my absolute love for the hats, they would still go in the upper tier. Damn, check out that brand. Victorian Maiden, my classical brand. So Victorian Maiden does wide varieties of cut styles, long dresses, short dresses. They've got gone through a bit of a shift recently with the closed and reopened. I have to say that their newer clothing is less my jam as it is more of a grandma's couch pattern type of deal. Uh, but I'm going to speak to what Victorian Maiden I own in my wardrobe, which is pretty much the past 12 years of Victorian Maiden clothing. Um, they are great materials great cuts they are absolutely flattering grown up they're not too cutesy they're you know something i can wear on a daily basis and for me victorian maiden is a damn brand like they are just i i love everything that they do and you can also once again find them on the cheap just like with with, with Milflar, uh a lot of people don't seem to gravitate towards that brand for some reason so because of that you can just grab them for really really cheap so it really helps to create a uh, office wardrobe. So it's a cool, it's a damn brand, not kawaii. Damn, check out that brand. Jane Marple is sort of like Emily Temple cute. They do a lot of like otome style clothing. Sometimes some Lolita leaning clothing, but to me it's more of a meh. I've never been as interested in their clothing. Their cuts are kind of simple. Once again, if it's if it's your thing, then all the more power to you. It just doesn't really fit into my aesthetic. So because of that, to me, it's more of a meh brand. It's a little bit meh. Putumayo would be a kawaii brand, definitely. You guys know that I love my cat prints. They used to have loads of that. Of course, a lot of their designs were a bit more on the younger and cuter side, which is less my aesthetic, but I love their bags. Their purses were such great quality, and a lot of their dresses could actually be coordinated in a very Lolita manner, adding in a lot of like elegance and flair. So it was still very versatile, even with some of the cuts uh, that were a little bit more cutesy probably. So for me, it, it would be solid kawaii brand. Their fabrics were a bit more on the jersey side than on the fancy velveteen uh, side, but I still very much enjoyed the brand.
Oh my god, kawaii! Alisua is a gothic brand that does some articles of clothing that could be added on to a Lolita wardrobe. I think that's why they're in this list. I didn't create the list, I'm just reacting to it. Um, and so because of that, I can't really speak to the quality of their garment. They look beautiful. It's more of a gothic romantic, which is my other types of style. But I, I kind of haven't bought from them because I do have western sized hips here. A lot of their things are built for Japanese sizing, which means there's not a lot in the hips department going on. So to me, I haven't been able to buy their stuff. Their design does look good. I would put them in okay because I like their designs, but I've seen some things like that in western brands. It's not anything that's super, super original, uh, but it does seem cute, you know? I mean, it's okay. Editor note, so when we were editing this video, we noticed that Royal Princess Alice hadn't been placed on the map, and I do believe that it deserves a position on there. Please do note that I've only owned one of their dresses, but I've seen a few and touched a few. And even though I do love their designs and I find that they're, they are more creative than some other brands, their choices of fabrics and lace tends to be subpar when compared to other brands. And as such, to me, it would be an okay brand. I mean, it's okay. Any of the brands that I didn't speak to is because I couldn't, I don't know them or I haven't known them. So for those, I hope you guys can forgive me. That being said, I hope you can share what your own ranking would be to see the stuff that you do agree with me with or don't. Uh, I am just interested to see what your own opinions and experiences with, were with different brands. I think this is an interesting topic to go through. Uh, and if you want to follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Elizabeth Fallen, please feel free to do so. And if you want to join the Baby Bap family on Patreon, please feel free to do so as well and help this to get this show on the road where we're trying to increase our production value uh, and get better videos out to you guys. Uh, but that being said, stay well, stay healthy, and I hope you guys are going to have an amazing day, an amazing week, and we will see you next time, guys. Take care. Bye.